Out of all the ways you can play DayZ, sniping has to be one of the most fun, albeit difficult styles to master, but it's not without its challenges. So here I'll go through not only the basics, but also some more complex ideas, tips and approaches so you can dominate everyone in your scope. If you liked the video or find it helpful, please leave a like or a subscribe, it genuinely helps me out. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Run, 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 run. <laughs> You're a boy, make a big noise. Wow. First things first, you need to know what guns are available. There are various long range guns, each with varying ranges and abilities and I'll mention a few of them and the options available here. Let's start with probably the most popular of them all. This is the Mosin. This is an iconic DayZ gun with excellent stopping power and range. And the biggest plus is it can be found around the coast and carried and used into the later game. Meaning if you're planning to do a sniper playthrough from the get go, you're usually able to do it reasonably quickly by just finding this gun. There's also the option of the VSS and the VSD which are both semi-autos. The VSS has a built in suppressor and is a good rifle that shines in mid to long range battles. But the VSD, in my opinion, it's better long range. However, I'd suggest practice with these two guns before you just go out and use them because there is a sweet spot with regards to distance if you want to get the kill every time. But if these aren't available, there are other options too. To name a few, there's the Pioneer, which can be made almost completely silent with a suppressor, though its stop and power isn't the highest on the list. The Tundra, which is an excellent and very popular rifle. The Blaze, which can fire two barrels at once for extra stopping power and makes for a really decent mid to long range weapon at the cost of a suppressor. And then you have the Savannah, which, well, the recoil is a lot, but if you can tame it between shots, this is a really useful weapon and a fun one to shoot. But somewhat repeating what I said before and something that is absolutely imperative, you need to actually use these rifles for yourself. There's no point in me saying this one is good or that one is bad or this one is better here if you aren't able to get a feel for it yourself. At the end of the day, if I was to tell you the Tundra was the best gun, somebody would come back and say the SK was. But once you've picked your weapon, you also need to pick your gear. Now, there are different types of armor, but when sniping, I'd recommend the stab or tactical vest over the plate carrier because the plate carrier has a significant impact on stamina. With regards to rifles, add a scope to improve accuracy and a suppressor to reduce sound, muzzle flash and discharge. A rangefinder is an incredible addition to any sniper's gear and can absolutely increase your accuracy. I'll explain how to properly utilize it in a little while. Claymores, landmines and tripwires are all useful to prevent flanking when perched and smoke grenades can aid in switching to a new vantage point the second your position is blown. Well, that's not smoke. Clothing wise, camo and ghillie suits are a great advantage here and you can even add a wrap to your gun most of the time. And the last two things I'd suggest using, firstly, EpiPens. They should be kept on you at all times in order to stabilize and line up your shots accurately. It can temporarily prevent gun sway. And I also recommend Pox Antidote. Being a sniper requires you to not camp, but let's say perch for a while. Perch, yeah, perch. Perch sounds way better than camp. But with the new toxic grenades and shots, it can leave you very vulnerable so having a pox antidote to just quickly pull out is definitely an advantage but how can you accurately hit your target let's start with the basics bear with me even if you know nothing about sniping you will by the end of this daisy has bullet drop meaning after a certain distance the bullet starts to fall to the ground this is usually more noticeable after 200 meters but it can change depending on the gun so in order to combat this bullet drop we need to compensate for it by doing two things firstly determining how much bullet drop there is and then it adjusting for it. To start off, we always need to know the range. There are a few ways to do this. Firstly, we can use the rangefinder. With a 9 volt battery inserted, the rangefinder will tell you exactly how far a target is to the meter. Or, some scopes have this little chart on, allowing you to work it out as you line up your shot in real time. To do this, place the target in the chart like so. Wherever they land on the chart is how far they are. You want to get the individual to line up exactly between the two lines, and then a number above to give you an indication of the distance in meters. But if you don't have a scope or a range finder, the way to do this is, well, you can estimate. This last one comes with experience and you'll eventually get it right more times than you get it wrong. Though I'd always recommend trying to use the first two methods first. Now we have our target's range, we need to compensate and adjust. Let's use the Pioneer and this ATOG scope. Some scopes, such as this one, literally display the meters on it in short form. For a shot, 200 meters or less, line up the target with 
the center. However, if your target is further away, let's say 300 meters, you may need to slightly tilt your rifle upwards to compensate for the bullet drop. Otherwise, you may aim for a target's head, miss and hit the floor. This means if you have a target roughly 400 meters away, you need to line it up with the mark with the little four here. The four obviously indicating 400 meters. If it's 500 meters, you need to line it up between the four and the six and so on. Some guns offer you the ability to do something called zeroing. This means setting your gun to hit targets at a further or closer range than its standard setting. In other words, if you zero it, you don't have to tilt your gun upwards for the shot. The gun will compensate for you. To do this, work out your target's distance as discussed earlier, aim down your sights and press the page up or page down on the keyboard or for controller, the up and down buttons on the D-pad to zero your weapon. You'll see this number change. Once you have it set to your target's distance, i.e. whatever the rangefinder or scope measurement displayed, you can use the center point normally to eradicate your target. You can notice here how I don't have to use the 4 or the 6 or tilt the rifle up to account for bullet drop. I just rely on the sight as normal having set my gun to the correct distance. But one of the best things to remember once you have this down is you should never shoot unless you know you're going to get a hit. Taking chances can be very costly. If possible, try to attack from the front on. This will give you the largest target to hit. It's also easier hitting someone running towards you or running away from you than it is hitting a target running left to right. So sometimes waiting for this opportunity to present itself will be in your best interest when making a shot, especially considering bullets travel at the speed of a bullet, not the speed of light. So there will be a delay between most shots and their eventual hit. You should also try and learn how to roll properly. This isn't always the right way to proceed and people seldom use it, but it's one of those skills that should be muscle memory and applied when necessary. There are some situations where you can shoot and roll to cover a lot quicker than standing up and running, making yourself a larger target, as well as more easily revealing your location. If you're scouting a base or a town, it might be worth setting up traps around if you're able. This can not only temporarily stun or knock down players long enough for you to kill them, but it can also act as a distraction to any other players around, taking them longer to identify that there's a sniper on their hill. Also keep in mind buildings such as police and medical facilities are well visited, so it might be worth looking for a good vantage point if you're near one of these buildings in a populated area, something that provides you with cover but a good line of sight. Oh, and by placing something interesting on the floor, you can get people to stop pretty much anywhere you want. Always plan your moves ahead. Take note of the best place to enter cover should your position be compromised. You don't want them sniping you back easily. Use the cover of trees, rocks, houses, hills, anything that breaks line of sight between you and your pursuer. Also, try and position the sun behind you. Not only does this give you a more full and shadowless picture from your point of view, but you want the sun rays to add a little visual interference when someone is searching for you. If the sun is low, use it to your advantage. Although not as bright as real life, it can still be an asset. If the sun is against you, consider wearing sunglasses to remove any annoying rays. Remember that a suppressed gun is not a silenced gun, and there will most likely be some muzzle flash or smoke giving away your location. To tackle this last one, try and put obstacles between you and the target. After your first shot, the player will be more than likely scanning the area to see where the shot come from. Your objective is to become invisible, even when the target is looking directly at you. I like to use trees like this in a sort Sort of prison bar effect. Not only does it offer better concealment, but it can sometimes offer a little protection from incoming fire. Alternatively, and especially if I'm in a ghillie suit, bushes can be useful too, but being positioned slightly back from the bush can also hide any flash or smoke from your shot. So instead of firing from a bush directly, firing through it may produce better results. Just be aware of your surroundings if you do. And keep in mind, it's not actually a sniper's nest. It's more of a pitch. And what I mean by this is, once you've gotten a few shots, shots in, you need to move on. Settling in for the long haul doesn't work well as a sniper on a hill. You can be flanked easily and quickly, so there's no point in being stubborn and wanting to get the guy. If you miss your opportunity, just move on. Otherwise, being stubborn will likely get you killed by his friend or a lucky passerby. 
shoot if you feel as though you can't do anything else, remove yourself from a situation, reduce the risk and reposition. Also when you do get a kill, don't get excited and run to the body. Make sure they have no friends and make sure nobody is in the area before you approach it. Also be aware of your silhouette. This is something I mentioned briefly in my night guide but it's just as important here. Given you always want the high ground, a risk you face is something called skylining. This is basically what you think it is. It's like a city skyline. When something has the sky as a backdrop, it's very easy easy to see even in the dark and with snipers spending lots of time on hills someone below them can more easily see them despite the fact snipers think they're really hidden. This is also extremely common when sniping from a roof of a building or a tower and it can be difficult to avoid. Just be aware of it and just try putting something behind you. You also need to watch your movements as in don't make any sudden movements. Some snipers act like they have wobbly head syndrome and wave their guns from side to side trying to scan the area. This is pretty easy to spot even by people not actively looking for a sniper. So make sure your movements are slow and calm until you're ready to line up a shot. I would never have noticed this guy had he not been waving his gun around sharply looking for someone else. And stamina. Stamina can be impacted by weight. So keep yourself light to increase the maximum time you can inhale and line up a shot. This is especially useful if you don't have any EpiPens. The heavier you are, the less time you can hold your breath. I also recommend most shots towards center mass. This gives you your best results with regards to margin of error because it provides you with the biggest target. However, aiming center mass doesn't always get you a kill. As you may have noticed throughout this video, I hit a few people but I didn't exactly kill them all. So when possible, always make sure to double tap, even if it means running over to the body with your weapon drawn and just putting a few rounds in them. And I've mentioned many times before, don't lie down in grass thinking you're protected even in a ghillie suit. Grass doesn't render after a certain distance. And remember, long barrels when when you try to point and aim will point towards the ceiling if they're too long and if you do manage to aim out of a window with a long barrel or even a bush keep in mind people will probably be able to see it even if you don't think they can so always take a few steps back then there's strategic movement and target acquisition to consider which can be way more difficult in the night because in day z there's a fine line between predator and prey especially as a sniper which is an inherently vulnerable class and if you want to learn how to not only survive but master the night and take back control click here and as always until next time